Hmm. I wonder how you give a Euclidean demonstration of gyromagnetic precession which occurs at the inner atomic level and occurs at every atom in the millions and trillions of little atoms inside the uh, electrified magnet. How do you demonstrate the gyromagnetic precession of 137.5077 degrees and 21.2460 degrees with a base angle of 1.23606 or 1 plus 5 to the power of negative 3. Well, since every little interatomic magnetodielectric coherency is exactly the same as an individual magnet, then we should be able to demonstrate the macro, demonstrate the micro on the macro level. Let's look at something really simple. Why does an a, what is a magnet in a, Counter dielectric countervoidance, since there's no such thing as uh, magnetic attraction, but only dielectric voidance and countervoidance. Yes, I'll explain that later. I know that's a horrendous claim to make, but why is it if you tape one down completely flat and you get this specific angle? Why? Look at that. That's the 21.246 uh, angle of gyromagnetic precession. 137.5077 and 21.246 degree also known as the Lamore frequency, however what it is is gyromagnetic precession as the incommensurate, incommensurate magnetodielectricity uh, conjugate themselves in a binding system. So let's see if we can demonstrate two atoms of gyromagnetic precession in a uh, coherent binding magnetodielectric system as found within the, uh, within the magnet, which is, uh, as we've already talked about, the dielectric object. So let's see here. Hmm. Why, that is a 21.246 angle. Yeah, I know, this is a really lame demonstration. Now you're thinking, well, you know, it's just doing that because you're spinning it like that, and it's wobbling on the inner circumference of the ring magnet, and uh, it's processing along the wire, so that's the reason it's doing that. Well, let's try it another way and see if it uh, still does the same thing by getting up to high speed way up top. Well, look, so that kind of eliminates that possibility. Let's try that again. So as it settles into the field, we have gyromagnetic precession. So what we were able to do is mimic the interatomic micro and the macro because the quote-unquote magnet, the electrified uh, conjugate magnetodielectric system, is... Uh, point non-specific self-similarity, which means I should be able to demonstrate any part of the magnet on the micro level on the macro level, which of course we can. That's 21 points. Well, you say, well, those are just two magnets on a stick. Have you actually measured that scientifically? And the answer is yes, I actually have. So, let's try that up here to disprove that the wobble is only occurring down there. Let's see if we can get up a higher speed. That is gyromagnetic precession. Oh, let's just forget about wobble. Why does it sit at that angle? Oh, you know, the bottom magnet's been been checked with the level. So why do we get this? You know, if the magnets are in opposition, shouldn't they both be countervoidance, dielectric countervoidance? It's not repulsion. Shouldn't if they're in complete repulsion, shouldn't they be sitting just like this? I mean, it, I mean, obviously it'd be one side or the other but they should be perfectly parallel. So why do they sit at an angle like that if you have one magnet that is level with the other? Of course, in the uh, actual magnet, quote-unquote, we have trillions and trillions of little atoms all sitting at this precessional angle of 21.246 degrees at a base angle of 137.5077 degrees, which is uh, gyromagnetic precession. All radiation necessitates movement. People say, well, is the magnetic field moving? Well, the magnetic field is the dielectric field. It is the discharge of necessitated charge from dielectricity. So magnetism is the discharge. Polarization, by definition, equals radiation, equals discharge. All radiation is definitionally moving either by field or in particles, alpha, beta, gamma, uh, transverse dielectromagnetic, 
as we now know that electromagnetism is not electromagnetism as it is z-axis radial dielectric components so here we have gyromagnetic precession imitated from the macro on to the micro on the mic That's procession. Well, yes, kiddies, that's how. And as I recently downloaded uh, my uh, document, I have a formula now for showing uh, the mean field of centrifugal divergence and centripetal convergence and the centripetal boundary. I discovered a formula that, uh, given a perfect magnet, which there never is one, but it's a, a great scientific model on my last video. You'll able, you're able to download that, and you're able to... Yes, this that wasn't, wasn't that an exciting of a video, but the really simple stuff needs to be gone over. The really, really simple stuff. Let me make one more quick little video for you, and let me see if you can figure it out. It will be a brain twister for you. Some of the really simple stuff. Now... The point here is, is that I can get a 10 year old to give me a description of something, but descriptions aren't explanations. I could discover a new little critter in a cave and give it a name, but that doesn't mean I understand what it is, what it eats, how it breeds, how it develops, etc, etc. Descriptions are not explanations. Okay, calling this field a domain or a region, or calling the midpoint on the quote-unquote magnet, a block wall, it means nothing. It is a name given and ascribed to a phenomena observed time and again. So they assign a name to a phenomena, but names, titles, descriptions are not explanation. The difference that differentiates educated idiots, or educated idiots that are shat out of college, are a bunch of morons that have studied descriptions but they have no explanation for anything. Explanations are where wisdom and true genius come in. If you don't understand something, you can only describe it, then you're no better than a ten-year-old. Wisdom comes at the point of explanation. That is the boundary which separates descriptions from explanations. Let's make one more quick video. I'm not going to answer it, but let's see if you can figure it out. Because if you can figure it out, then you'll have a firm grasp of magnetism, at least on a rudimentary level, far better than most people can. So let's go over to the next short little video, and uh, I won't answer it, so let's take a look. Thanks for watching. Working hard on the third volume.